we're going to take a look today at how acupuncture works. So what are some of the um, underpinnings or what have scientists found to describe the way that acupuncture works? Um, what do we know about it? So um, we already, um, you know, introduced myself, but um, basically uh, I am Nikhil Ramburn, licensed doctor of acupuncture. That's a state licensure in Rhode Island and licensed acupuncturist in the state of Connecticut. And um, we'll take a look at some of those underlying uh, mechanisms. So um, we find four primary mechanisms that underlie acupuncture or four primary ways to understand uh, the way that acupuncture works. So firstly, we have our local mechanism. So local mechanism, that just means that when the needle is inserted, there's a physiological response at the site of insertion. So we'll get a little bit more into that. But you're looking at things like increased blood flow to the area, increased permeability of the, of the blood vessels, which then allows things like uh, white blood cells to, um, to come out from the, from the vessels and scavenge for any scar tissue or debris. Um, Increased blood flow to, to a certain area promotes healing as well in that area. So those are some of the um, local, local mechanisms. So we'll come back to that as well. And number two, we have activation of the nerve pathway. Okay, so the, um, the activation of the nerve pathway. So that's basically our ability to modulate the nervous system. Um, we can think of the autonomic nervous system, for example, that's not under our conscious control, but via these nerve pathways, we're able to impact things like blood pressure, heart rate, different physiological, different bodily processes that are not under conscious control. And once again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the, um, the nerve pathway as well. Number three, we have our spinal segment. So um, basically, all the nerves um, come back into the central nervous system. And at different parts of the spine, you have different nerves emerging from, from different spinal segments. And they, they innervate or they connect to the skin, the organs, the muscles. And so by placing a needle into the skin layer, we're able to impact different organs or different areas of, of skin or even muscle um, that are also supplied in nerves by the same spinal segment. So this is one of the ways that we might uh, place a needle um, in one area of the leg or the foot and it's going to impact other areas of the leg or foot that are also supplied or also innervated by the same spinal segment. And then at number four, we have our brain level pathway. And that's simply what's happening in the brain as a result of, electro, of uh, acupuncture. Um, we'll discuss more electroacupuncture in a little bit, but this is just basic um, effects of acupuncture by itself uh, without necessarily requiring any electrical stimulation. So uh, for example, in the brain, you have the production of different neuropeptides, which are, um, chemicals in the brain that facilitate certain processes. So for example, um, you have the example of our body's own natural painkillers. So we have our own pharmacy up there in the brain and the central nervous system. And we have our own endogenous opiates. So these are the opiates that the body produces to um, relieve pain. And via acupuncture, we can stimulate the production of these natural painkillers in the central nervous system in the brain. All right, so moving on to a little bit more detail with our first mechanism of acupuncture, the local effect. So we talked about the increased blood flow. So an increased blood flow to the area, once again, it would help with um, healing. So if, um, for example, um, we can think of a patient that has uh, chronically tight muscles, perhaps. Um, one of the features of a trigger point, well, um, and so in this case, um, we can say this is a patient that comes in with, uh, say, shoulder pain. 
And so in this case, this patient has certain trigger points, certain chronically tight bands of uh, connective tissue of muscle. And within those chronically tight um, tissue, within those chron chronically tight muscles, there's, there's less blood flow. So we know that. Um, there's um, other things that are happening too. There's less ATP production. So there's less um, energy production. And that's going to be useful when we talk about uh, microcurrent. So anyway, in this case, we're stimulating blood flow to the area um, with, with uh, local needling. Um, in addition, we're also stimulating the neurovascular complex. All right, so this is a bundle of nerve tissue, nerve fibers, along with um, vascular tissue that, underlying, that underlies some of the um, big acupuncture points that we know about. So for example, um, we have a point on, on the hand that a lot of people know to press on for, for pain relief. It's right between that thumb and that first index finger. And so um, this is what we call um, LI4, um, acupuncture point. And this is a big neurovascular bundle, big neurovascular complex. So if you press on it, you definitely get an effect. And I invite you to kind of do that as you're uh, attending this presentation if you've never done it before. But this point is very powerful at um, eliciting this analgesic effect this pain relieving effect. So pressing on this point LI4, stimulating the neurovascular complex just through pressure um, is gonna stimulate the production of your body's own endogenous painkillers. So your body's own natural opiates, your body's natural painkillers. So um, of course with the needle, we're able to stimulate consistently and, and sort of more accurately, we're able to stimulate the same neurovascular complex. So this, this is some of the uh, local effects of, of needling a certain point or a certain area. Um, next, uh, we see that there's an effect at the level of the nerve pathway. So at the level of the nerve pathway, we're basically um, looking at modulating the autonomic nervous system. So once again, autonomic nervous system, we're, we're looking at things like cardiovascular health, which is heart health, um, we can look at blood pressure, gut motility, which is um, the contractions of the, um, of, of the large intestine, of the gut. Um, uh, we're looking at anti-nausea effects. So all these things are under autonomic nervous system control, which means um, it's not necessarily under our direct conscious control. And through and, and by working with um, points that have these uh, nerve pathways underneath them were able to uh, to modulate or regulate uh, different elements of the autonomic nervous system. In addition, now with electroacupuncture, which we're going to get into a little bit later, we also have um, the additional benefit of nerve depolarization. What that does basically is it allows the um, it allows us to work through unconscious patterns of tension. So by depolarizing the nerve, we're able to send a message to the brain to relax certain chronically tight muscles. So by working with the level of the nerve, we're able to tell the nervous system to make the muscles relax, which is really quite powerful if, if you're dealing with patterns of, of pain or even just chronic uh, muscle tension. And we know that um, if there's pain, um, other body areas are going to compensate. There's going to be tightness in the soft tissue, which is the muscle, the fascia. And so by um, working at the level of the nervous system, we're able to um, make the body relax those muscles, which is really, really powerful. So our third mechanism is the spinal segment. So once again, spinal segmentation is... Um, this idea that um, there's a connection between the, um, the organs, the muscles, and the skin dermatomes. They're all innervated by the same spinal segment. So um, let's take an example here. So if we look at uh, the L5 dermatome, so it's arising from the level of L5 in the back, which is here, if you see my little pointer on the, on the presentation. So L5, spinal segment in the low back, lumbar spine, um, 
you can see that if there's pain along this L5 region, which includes this area of the heel, and you'll often see that in sciatic, in sciatica type patients, so patients that complain of sciatic type pain, they might complain of pain down the side of the leg in this region or even in this region right here. And um, the idea is that by using points along this dermatome pathway, we can impact, um, so for example, we can use a point on the foot to then impact pain a little higher up on the leg or perhaps even in the hip. As you can see, it's also innervated by the same dermatome, same um, spinal segment. And, and also we can work at the level of the spinal segment itself. So we can work at the level of L5, the fifth lumbar vertebra, and we can impact um, you know, pain or even numbness um, tingling, any kind of um, nerve pain or, or uh, nerve discomfort along the pathway of this of this specific uh, dermatome. Um, our fourth um, fourth pathway or fourth mechanism is um, the brain level pathway. So here um, we're looking at the regulation of neurotransmitters. Um, such as dopamine and serotonin, for example, in the, in the limbic brain structure. So the limbic brain um, is, a very, is a very old brain structure. Um, it comes from our reptilian ancestors <laughs> in the evolutionary uh, chain of things. And so uh, this limbic brain is, is um, you know, it, it's responsible for our survival. It's a very primal um, sort of behavior. And, um, we can regulate the production of things like dopamine and serotonin. And those are responsible, for example, for, for mood, um, for um, you know, dealing with um, addiction, um, dopamine is. And then serotonin, um, you may have heard of, um, it, commonly implicated in things like depression, anxiety. Um, so by modulating, by uh, regulating the level of um, serotonin in the brain, um, acupuncture, um, and then later we'll talk a little bit about electroacupuncture is very effective at um, treating um, psychoemotional disorders, which are um, things like depression, anxiety. And, and one of the ways that it can do that is because um, along with all the other mechanisms that we talked about, local mechanism, the um, nerve pathway, the spinal segment, um, acupuncture also has a very strong effect on the central nervous system and the brain. And so next up is a um, little chart that I, that I made. So this is a poster that's available. Um, and basically it summarizes these four mechanisms, uh, four mechanisms of action of acupuncture, how acupuncture works, uh, something that's, um, you know, acupuncturists can get and put up in their office, something like that. It's very useful for uh, patient education. So next up, we're going to get into why you use electroacupuncture. So there's definitely some mystery surrounding electroacupuncture, what it is, what it does, where it comes from. And so we'll try to elucidate. We'll try to uh, shed some light on some of these uh, questions today. One of the big takeaways from electroacupuncture is reproducible and effective results. So um, it's easier to standardize or to get um, consistent results, I should say. Um, and then we also get very effective um, results with electroacupuncture. So we'll get a little bit into that. Um, this is the uh, background of electroacupuncture, which is very interesting. This is an, um, a, a photo of a publication from the time, 1825. Um, you can see here, and this is uh, Memoir sur l'électropuncture. So this is how they called it in France at the time, electropuncture as opposed to electroacupuncture. Um, it also has a little mention of Japanese moxa in France. <laughs> it's a little bit of an overview of uh, electroacupuncture and Japanese moxa. Um, and so this is one of the earliest uh, uh, claims of, of electroacupuncture that we can find it's from 1825 by a French physiologist called Jean-Baptiste Salandier. And um, 
so that's where it kind of originated. But um, of course, you know, acupuncture itself came from um, from 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 China, and so um, there is um, some um, early attributions to a Chinese doctor as well. Um, who wrote a treatise on the subject in 1934. He called it the technique and principles of electroacupuncture and the study of electroacupuncture. So it's very interesting how uh, there's this connection between the, um, the East, China, to Europe, back to China. And um, for me, what's very striking, uh, and we won't have time to dive too much into it today, but what's very striking to me is this once again, this connection uh, between China and, and the West that we see with um, auricular acupuncture. So auricular acupuncture has a very similar history where it was, of course, um, you know, there's evidence of it, in, it from ancient China, but then it was really popularized um, by a French or, um, and also a German uh, researcher um, who really, um, sort of standardized and, and sort of um, presented to the international community this um, map of the points on the ear. And that's what I mean by auricular acupuncture is we use the ear to treat various areas of the body. So that's another fascinating uh, topic that deserves its own uh, little, little presentation. Um, but so anyway, so um, this, is, this is a little bit of the history of, of electroacupuncture. And, um, we're going to take a step back here um, as we try to answer this question of why we would use electroacupuncture. Well, we got to get, go back to the core of acupuncture, which is the arrival of qi. So what is called in China, the da qi sensation. And there's a clear distinction between um, da qi and, and no da qi. So da qi, you can think of it as uh, the stimulation of the neurovascular complex. Right, so this feeling of uh, achiness, soreness, pressure, different ways that it's described in the literature and different ways that uh, patients experience it. So you can kind of see on this chart, this is from a, a research study where they um, needled a, a, a various patients and, and sort of assessed what were the predominant sensations and, and um, seems like achiness, tingling, um, along with you know pressure and soreness, those tend to be um, some of the predominant de qi sensations, the acceptable sensation of um, point stimulation. And so, and then remember, this is basically stimulation of the underlying nerve fibers. This is stimulation of the neurovascular complex that's under the point that, that we're needling. And one thing we got to keep in mind is that is this, this is very different from pain. We're not talking about pain. Even this dull pain here at the end is very different than any kind of uh, acute pain sensation. And um, we'll see how that's, that produces drastically different effects on the brain. But anyway, we, we're after the chi. Um, there's various forms of acupuncture, but um, we now know that there's a distinct difference in, in, in the brain when the neurovascular bundle is stimulated and the da qi sensation is achieved, and when it is not. Um, so um, this will tie into electroacupuncture because we can stimulate the point very consistently and achieve this da qi sensation with electroacupuncture. Uh, but just to make the point clear that this is not pain, uh, we see clear difference in the brain when um, we're using acupuncture, da qi, getting that uh, dull descending feeling or that pressure, um, that uh, tingling sensation. And I think it's very important to, for patients to know that those are um, normal, acceptable, common sensations, and, and they're not to be, it's not, there's no need to be afraid of those sensations, right? And so it's important for practitioners to, to communicate that to their, pa uh, to their patients. So what we see in this um, first square here, the acupuncture de chi sensation, we see that uh, there's different brain regions that are uh, deactivated. So this blue shows a decrease in activity, right? And that's usually correlated with positive uh, findings in acupuncture. So um, the de qi sensation um, actually deactivates certain brain regions. Now, the difference is that um, when there's pain, 
you can see an activation, more activation of, of certain brain regions and less deactivation. So you see less of those blue areas and a lot more of those orange, yellow, uh, reddish areas, which show greater activation of brain regions with pain. And again, with Dochi, less activation. So there's a key difference. This is just a sensory control. Uh, so they just use a different level of sen uh, different um, sensory stimulation, not, not Dochi, not pain. Um, and then you just see the result there. So there's a, there's a clear, um, a clear effect on the brain when the neurovascular bundle that underlies points is stimulated and the Dochi sensation is achieved. 